Welcome back! Look at this uh, Dev Life merch I've been working on. This is a prototype that I'm gonna uh, send the manufacturer just so they get all the details right. You know what I mean? Man, my stupid Yeti mic broke, so we are gonna <laughs> be using my, uh, the earbuds like the good old days. Dude, that was like a hundred dollar mic, but we gotta keep the show going. Uh, let's get started. So here we have some enemies and I wanna show you uh, how these enemies work. I'm gonna put this one over here up on the ledge and you might think, oh, it'll fall down, right? But GB Studio doesn't actually have real gravity. So that turn up up on the ledge, check this out. It's just gonna <laughs> walk, <laughs> it's gonna walk right off the edge. And that looks kind of dumb, right? So how do we make it not walk off the edge? That's what I'm gonna show you. We're gonna create our own AI. It's gonna be so cool. It's gonna be so cool. It's gonna be cool. So click the turnip here, and I don't know if you knew this, but you can drag this out, and then it creates two columns. And if you look at the turnip here, it just has a movement speed and a collision group, but you, but it's like, where's all the logic, right? Over here, there's on update, on init, and on hit. And if you look into the on update, you can see that here there's code to move the turnip towards the player. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna delete this. Bye bye. And now that we deleted that, you can see that the turnip isn't moving. The turnip's just standing still. So now we're starting from, from, from a base AI. It's got everything we need except the movement. We remove the movement and we're gonna make our own movement. Okay, so now in the update, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an if else statement. If the actor is at a position. So if the actor is at and if you hover your mouse around in the bottom left corner, it shows you the X and Y values. So if the actor is at position right here, we can see X is 80 and Y is 10. So let's do 80 and 10. If the actor is at this position, a red box appeared there, you can see that. So uh, what we wanna do is we want the, the, <laughs> the target <laughs> to move to. So you can search move to, actor move to. And now we probably want the uh, turnip to move to the other end of this cliff. And we can see that that is at 89 and 10. So here we're gonna put in 89 and 10. If we hit play now, nothing's gonna happen because the actor hasn't hit, it isn't, it isn't at that position 80 and 10. We can see that the turnip is at 84 and 10. But now if we grab the turnip, and we put it at 80, 10, 80, 10, you see it matches that location. If we hit play now, what should happen is that the turnip should end up moving to 89, 10. And there it goes, it's moving, moving, and then it stopped. So well, uh, this is a great spot for us to start the turnip at, and what you'll want to do is you'll wanna start the turnip at one of those locations that gets it to start moving. And just do if um, actor is at position. And now we're gonna check if the actor is at position 89 and 10. This is basically the other end. So then you add another move to event. Make sure you have the same turnip selected. Okay, so now if it's at 89 and 10, we want it to go back the other direction. Is that, is that the, no, this way. <laughs> we want it to go the other direction, which is uh, gonna be 80 and 10. And now we're gonna have it go in between those two points. So you see um, 89 and 10, and here we have 80 and 10. So the red boxes will show you where that is. Now if I hit play, we should see it going back and forth. There he goes, he's going back and forth. Look at that, it's amazing. Oh yeah. And since we since we kept the code in, boom, you can still stop him. And so, if, so it has all the killing code in there. We just customized the movement. And the amazing thing about this is that it, you could just give it a bat sprite, put it in the air, and there's no gravity, so it could just fly back and forth in the air, or up and down, or even zigzag. You can have it move in all sorts of directions. You can create more points, so you can have it go in a triangle, or circle, or square, or whatever you want. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is a cool online learning community. And I saw, I saw Marquise Brown Lee on there, and he talks a lot about how to make a YouTube channel, which is something that I know nothing about. <laughs> and I learned so much.
33 of you are following me on Skillshare. That's so cool. At 100, I'll make a video on there. Skillshare is less than $10 a month with the annual subscription. And the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. All right, I'm gonna take another turnip here and I'm gonna go in its on update and I'm also gonna re remove its movement code. Now it's just gonna stand still. It's not gonna move anywhere. But what we can do is on update, we can check if we can check if the player is above, below, left of, or the right of. So let's say we can check if the player is above. So if the player is above the turnip, like the player is about to jump on the turnip or something, we can have the turnip move uh, out of the way. Uh, this would be a really funny joke that you could do, but uh, check this out. I can do um, actor move relative to, and I can just set this to negative one, and it'll move left. If I set it to one, it'll move to the right. So if the actor is above this turnip, the turnip's gonna start moving. Uh, <laughs> let's see this in action. I bet it's just gonna do a tiny little scoot. So here we go, I'm gonna jump. And every time that I jump, I'm above it. So it's not right above it, it's just a higher Y axis. So <laughs> look, every time that I jump, it keeps moving closer to me. So of course, if we wanted it to chase me, we could do, if player is to the left of the turnip, we're gonna have it move left. Else, and here I would do if relative to actor, if the player is to the right of the turnip, then we're going to do move relative and add a one here. And now it should constantly follow me. Let's see if this works. So it's coming towards me and I jumped over it and now it's going the other direction. Isn't that awesome? We basically just created a follow AI. And if you have a pet, you can have the pet follow the player or you can have um, sort of like a protection quest or something. I don't know, whatever. You can be creative with this however you want. But what we can do now is we can add a trigger. So let's add a trigger right here, a nice tall one. I'm gonna move the player a little bit further back. And what we'll do in this trigger is we're going to add an event to show an actor. And of course you can have the actor get shown a little bit off screen, but basically turnip two, is that what it was called? Turnip two, yeah. So when we hit this trigger, we're gonna show turnip two. So turnip two will just pop in and start chasing us. Watch this. Boom, <laughs> it appeared right in front of my face. I'm gonna go here to the turnip and I'm gonna change its sprite to something that looks like a, a bullet. Let's see, bullet. <laughs> that, that doesn't really look like a bullet, but we're gonna use that. And let's say this turnip right here, or, or I'll just create a new actor. So I'm gonna create a new actor. I'm gonna place it right here. And we're gonna pretend this is like a piranha plant from Mario or something, right? I'm just gonna uh, set it as, uh, all right, I'm gonna make it the cat, <laughs> all right? So now, um, this actor, you know, on update, we had it move left if I'm left of it, move right if I'm right of it. I can just delete this. And so in this turnip, I'm, tu I'm turning it into a bullet, all right? I'm gonna, and <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I removed everything in the on update, and I'm just going to uh, do move, uh, relative actor move relative and I'm gonna set this to negative one because we're gonna want this to go left and remember when I hit this trigger it makes this actor come alive and move left but since I put the cat right here it's gonna look like the cat shot a bullet at us so there's the cat and, and the cat shot a bullet at us and that's how you can make it look like enemies shoot projectiles or you can have it shoot all sorts of different stuff but that's how you can do attacks an enemy attack can just be another actor and then you put the logic in that actor. Okay, so I know the next thing you'd wanna ask is, okay, well, how do I do ammo? Sure, we shot one actor, but I want my enemy to keep shooting, right? Because if you create a boss, you want it to shoot a bunch of fireballs or something. So let me show you how to do that. I'm gonna put the cat up here just so it doesn't shoot us in the face. <laughs> and I'm gonna put the bullet here. And I think the trigger right here is, is fine. 
and if we test this out always every single little thing that you do test it right away because you want to make sure that you didn't make a mistake anywhere so it looks like we hit the trigger and the cat fired the bullet and as you can see the bullet just keeps going and going and going and going but that's not what we want we don't want the bullet to just keep going forever and the cat to only have one attack right and then we also don't want to copy paste this like 10 times so that the cat has 10 attacks we want the, the, cat, the cat to keep being able to attack us without creating a bunch of new actors hey man i'm one of the dudes working on dwarf it's a tower defense dungeon crawler rpg and you can wish this did on steam now please do or else i'll be poor <laughs> okay so to set the bullets speed in the trigger where we set the actor to show, that's where we can also set the movement speed. And here, um, it was going pretty slow, so let's change it to like three. And make sure you choose your, the, the, oh, it's turnip two. Make sure you have the right one selected there. And now we should see the turnip zoom across the screen. <laughs> there it goes. So in the trigger here, I uh, remember that when you hit the trigger, it'll show the, the turnip. I'm just going to call it the bullet. It'll show the bullet, the projectile, and then it sets the projectile movement speed. I set it to the fastest one so that we can make sure it's off screen to, for, for testing. And then we're going to wait two seconds and then it's going to put it back to the original position. And then we're going to show it again. The reason we have to show it again when we put it back to the original position is because when it goes off screen, it gets hidden. So when we bring it back, we have to make sure to show it again. And let's see if this works. So here we are, it flew off screen and about two seconds later, it's back again. And now we have a continuous attack happening. There you guys go. I'm glad I figured that out for you or else you would have been like, dude, Peter, what the heck, this isn't working. The timer is right under this cloud though. This is where the timer is so you have to make sure that this stays in your screen so wherever you have the boss battle make sure that the trigger is within the boss arena like create like a room where the gate closes behind the player or something and that way you can have all the timers stay on screen and keep track of all the uh, projectiles and bullets so that the boss can go through it without the player like going off screen and messing up the the timers in a boss's attacks or whatever and of course, you can put the timers on the boss as well. You don't have to put them in a trigger. You can also put timers on actors. I think that that is plenty for you guys to do some really cool stuff, uh, some really cool AI. I'll see you guys next week. Dev Live!